Hey guys, and welcome back to Fertility Charting 101. Um, today we are going to be talking about basal body temperature. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and let you know that um, for about the past week now, our neighbor's dog has decided that it wants to bark constantly. Um, so if it um, starts barking, I'm sorry. Um, but I've been trying to wait him out, so hopefully he won't. Um, okay, so let's get right into it. Um, basal body temperature is basically uh, your temperature when you first wake up in the morning. Uh, a couple of details on it is that um, pre-ovulatory temperatures, before you ovulate, your temperatures are lower. And after you ovulate, your temperatures are higher. Um, and they raise basically um, the day after or a few days after ovulation. Um, <clears throat> so your eggs are um, developed inside what they call a follicle or um, housed inside a follicle. Um, your ovaries produce several follicles and basically the biggest one um, is the winner and that's one that produces the egg that's released um, and that's what ovulation is is when the egg um, bursts from the ovary into the fallopian tube uh, the follicle that the egg came from it actually remains um, and it's called the corpus luteum and the corpus luteum produces progesterone, uh, which is a heat-inducing hormone, and basically it it warms your body um, to make you uh, a human incubator. So, you know, kind of makes sense. You're you're growing a your body's preparing you to grow a baby inside. Um. So why basal body temperature is important. Um, it's used to um, confirm ovulation. Some women want to um, use it to predict, but it's very hard to predict it, um, which you'll see later on with basal body temperature. Um, but uh, it's, it's very useful for confirming that you have ovulated. And the reason it's not not really used f to predict it is because by the time your temperature rises, um, it's normally too late to get pregnant because if you haven't already become pregnant, then the egg has already um, died by that time because after ovulation, the egg lives for um, about 24 hours. And it is rare um, but some women actually do have a temperature drop right before ovulation, um, and I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, so, next I'm going to go over how to take your basal body temperature and how to chart it. Um, first thing is that you want to take it uh, first thing in the morning and the same time every morning. Um, that's before you do anything else, before you use the bathroom, brush your teeth get up anything um, and you take it like I said the same time each day um, or within within an hour or so um, and you also need to take your temperature after you've had at least three consecutive hours of sleep um, and then you're going to record your temperature on your basal body or your on your chart um, if you have an app you just type in your temperature and it'll pre-record it for you if you're using a paper chart I'm actually going to show you a couple of examples um, and basically you're you're playing connect the dots if you have a paper chart you're gonna connect each dot um, so you're also gonna want to make a note of anything that might have affected your basal body temperature on your chart and um, there's a lot of things that can affect your temperature 
and uh, I'm going to go over those real quickly with you. Um, if you have a fever, that will obviously affect your temperature. Uh, drinking alcohol the night before will also affect your temperature. Getting less than three consecutive hours of sleep. Um, taking your temperature at substantially different times than usual. And using stuff like electric blankets or heating pads can also affect your your temperature. All of these things will make your temperature higher than um, what it should be. All right. Um, so once you have your temperatures taken. Your chart might look something like this. Uh, this is just one of these standard charts. And as you can see, the dots like this are temperatures. Um, so when you're looking for ovulation, um, it's going to be the first day that your temperature rises at least two tenths of a, of a degree higher than it has for the previous six days and it's also going to be around um, the time that you have your um, most fertile quality cervical mucus and what you're looking for when you're looking for ovulation as you can see there's a lot of dips and ups and downs and stuff like this but you're going to look for the pattern temperature shift pattern. Uh, as you can see, these are all up and down within the low range and these are all up and down within the high range. So this chart is basically a standard chart that confirms ovulation because as you can see, uh, the temperature shifts and does this. Um, a lot of people draw a cover line on their chart. And what you want to do to, to draw a cover line, you identify the first day that your temperature rises at least two tenths of a degree higher than it has been for the previous six days. So, as you can see, like this one jumps two degrees, but it, it this is not higher than any of these days. So, you have this jump right here, and you're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six. So these are your previous six days and you're going to draw the cover line one tenth of a degree higher than your um, highest temperature those previous six days. So I'm going to draw a quick cover line on this and then show you what it looks like. As you can see, I drew it up here, which I forgot to grab a pen, so <laughs> uh, I'd use that. But it's at 97.7 because the highest on the past six days was 97.6. Okay, and so that is going to be your standard chart. Um, here's another example of a standard chart on... Um, I kind of like this one, but I kind of don't like this chart because it's harder to see um, the shifts because the numbers are so small, but you can actually circle the actual number. They've got the actual numbers on this chart. As you can see, it's uh, 99 within the 99 degrees, within the 98 degrees, 97 degrees. So you just circle, um, which you can see right here is going to be your temperature shift. Um, and that will confirm ovulation for that chart. Uh, <clears throat> so, like I said, the first chart was standard chart. Um, the next chart is going to be a slow rise chart. And as you can see on this one, temperature 
kind of up and down in this area and then starting on this day it's higher than the previous six days so one two three four five six this one's higher so the cover line is actually going to go right in here and it will go across your temperature where you ovulated um, and there's nothing wrong with that that's a common one it's just not as common as the standard chart and a few tips uh, that I want to show you about the basal body temperature is um, the first one is disregarding a temperature okay so like I said if you um, have drank the night before, if you have fever, um, anything like that, your temperature will be higher. So as you can see on this chart, what I've done is, here's my normal days, then right here, uh, let's just say I drank the night before, um, I'm going to have a much higher temperature than the night before, and so... I'm going to put that one up there, but I'm going to disregard it. Um, if you have an app, you normally will have a button that you can hit disregard. And I'm going to do a dotted line connection to this one. And so when my temperature shift, I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, and this will be number six because this one, we're just disregarding it as if it wasn't there. And you make a note down here as to why. Okay. And the next one is an example of an anovulatory cycle, meaning you did not ovulate. As you can see, it's just up and down all the way through with no obvious temperature shift. Um, now, this can also happen if you're um, a mouth breather um, this is kind of what a lot of my charts looked like because I breathe through my mouth at night and so my temperatures were not accurate and um, what you can do to fix that if your chart looks like this but you still feel like you are ovulating is switch to temping vaginally that will give you um, an accurate reading if it's not giving you accurate readings orally. Um, let's see. So before you decide you're not ovulating, switch to temping vaginally and see if that helps. Uh, this next chart is just an example of how basal body temperature can help you um, see something like if you have low progesterone. Um, as you can see on this one, you also have your obvious temperature shifts, but on your post ovulatory you keep having these dips that go below the, t the cover line uh, that is something that you might want to talk to your doctor about to see if there's a problem with your progesterone levels um, the next one is very very fun let's see um, it is our Trifastic, trifastic chart. I hope I'm saying that right. So, if you look at this one, you'll see again the before you ovulated, and then this is after you ovulate. And then about a week later, it's got another jump, and it stays even higher. Um, this is actually almost always. Um, or often a sign that you have gotten pregnant um, it, because this is this indicates that there's the extra progesterone after the implantation which normally occurs about a week after the egg is fertilized okay uh, this one is just an example of a chart where you have um, high temps during your period um, 
a lot of women have this. It's nothing to be concerned about. It's very common because um, it's caused by residual progesterone from the last cycle. And so basically, just don't even pay attention to those when drawing your cover line. It's going to be the same thing with the six previous days. And this is post-ovulatory, confirms ovulation. Okay. Next is um, the temp dip before rise. Um, some women will have a consistent dip in their temperature before the rise. And as you can see right here, all of a sudden it dips down before it jumps up. And um, it's believed that this occurs on the day of ovulation due to the high levels of estrogen uh, that brings your temperature down, which would be the LH surge. Um, and so if you're you know if you're trying actively trying, this is a great day to baby dance because you know that you are ovulating. Um, and that is only if your chart consistently shows this because not all women have this. Um, so if you don't have this, that's why you need to be relying on your cervical mucus to tell you uh, your most fertile days and when to baby dance. Okay. And this next one is our stair step pattern. And as you can see in this one, um, it's very similar to the standard. Uh, it's just it doesn't rate the uh, temperature doesn't raise as high in the very beginning so it's got a few days that are lower in the higher range before it jumps up uh, this is different than the, than the trifastic though because it's only it'll only be about three or four days before it jumps back up with the trifastic you need about um, a week really um, probably the lowest would be like six days so that is how that one is different. Okay, and then we have the fallback pattern. And a lot of women will have this um, pre ovulatory. They'll have the jump and then it'll fall back, but then the rest will be above. And what you do in this case is you just disregard this temperature. And that way you know to draw your cover line here and that ovulation has occurred right here. Okay. And um, another thing that charting can help, which um, not only basal body temperature, but a lot of the other signs as well can help you determine if your luteal phase is short or not. This chart is an example of someone with a short luteal phase because as you can see you've got your um, pre-ovulatory right here and then your temperature shift so you've ovulated and you have one two three four five six seven eight nine days before you're back to your period um, this would be an example of a short luteal phase because you're only having nine days and that might be something you want to talk to your doctor about as well. This next chart though is more of an example of a delayed reaction to progesterone than a short luteal phase and the only way you're going to know this is if you're also tracking your cervical mucus. So as you can see this one also has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, um, high temps before the period starts. But if you're looking down here, um, you've got menstruation, dry, sticky, creamy, and then you've got your egg whites right here. Um, so most likely ovulation occurred on this day, right after your last egg white day. And um, your body is just taking longer than most women's body to respond to progesterone. This does happen, so if this is consistently happening to you, just know that you most likely ovulated 
earlier in your cycle and you can talk to a doctor about this also to have this confirmed um, another reason that you might want to chart your basal body temperature is because it can help you catch if you have hyper or hypothyroidism um, normal temperature for before ovulation is 97 degrees to 97 and a half degrees. Uh, normal temperature after ovulation is 97.6 degrees to 98.6 degrees. Uh, if you have hyperthyroidism, your temps tend to be higher than normal, and if you have hypothyroidism, your temps tend to be lower than normal, and that's just the all over temps. Um, And so if you find your temps, you know, higher or lower than what's considered normal, um, talk to your doctor about that as well. Uh, they might, they can do an easy thyroid check for you and um, prevent you a lot of stress from that. The last thing I want to show you is um, the, I'm going to do the quotations, implantation dip. Um, I did the quotations because this is a very, um, I guess, debated argument as to whether there's an implantation, implantation dip or not. So, this is different than the fallback rise, too, because as you can see, you've got your pre right here, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight below the cover line and back up um, now if you are well let's just say if you've read taking charge of your fertility um, taking charge of your fertility states that this is um, fine it's just an indication that your body is returning uh, to fertility and the non-fertilized egg is dead and gone but um, Fertility Friend which is the fertility app I use they did a recent study on these dips and they studied 116,691 charts that had this dip now the criteria for the dip was that it had to happen between 5 and 12 days past ovulation so it couldn't be the fallback rise and 11% um, of charts that showed ovulation but did not result in pregnancy had this dip. But 23% of charts that showed ovulation and resulted in pregnancy had this dip. Um, so there was more charts where the woman ended up being pregnant than not pregnant that had the the dips and the ones on the pregnancy charts occurred between seven and eight days past ovulation so that can be an indicator of pregnancy um that is it um for basal body temperature oh i'm so sorry that it was so long i tried to cut it as much as i could um but there's just so much that goes into basal body temperature um it took a really long time so if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments. You can also email me, um, and I can try to help you out. If you want more details on any specific part of the basal body temperature, let me know, and I might be able to make another video about it. Um, but I tried to, like I say, cut it as short as I could, um, because this video is really long, and I'm sorry about that. Um, but yeah, so thumbs up, and subscribe. And um, like I said, leave me a comment down below. If you have any tips that I missed, make sure to leave it in the comments down below. And I will talk to you guys later.